Hola, Reyes y Reinas, High Kings and Queens. I pray that today I find you excited to get activated with the Holy Spirit. If I don't find you excited, borrow some of mine. I'm going to open in prayer today. Um, we're reading from Isaiah 49, 16, which reads, See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you for it to accomplish what you sent it to accomplish, Father. May we have that same obedience. May we may we have that same feeling of engraving uh, in our hands your presence, your example, your ways. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you for engraving us in your hands, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you that we have uncommon, unearned, unexplainable knowledge, revelation, insight, clarity, uh, spiritual discernment discernment, joy, peace, a partnership in your presence, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you for igniting in us, activating in us, Lord, your power in any area where we are weakness, even in the, the areas that we don't know we are weakness. We are weak. Thank you for giving us the fruits of your Holy Spirit so we can accomplish living as you've called us to live, to be, to serve, and fulfill in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you that we have this expectancy to walk expecting from you. And thank you, Father, for just activating in us what needs to be activated and prioritizing in us what we need to prioritize, Father. Gracing in us, forgiving in us, so we can go out in the world and live as you exampled us to live. We thank you that we are exceptionally able, pre-qualified, favor, protected, pre-approved, equipped, and will be everything that you have ignited us, activated in us, created us to be and to fulfill in Jesus' mighty name. May we uproot, may we tear down where you've called us to lean in and where you've called us to lean out. In Jesus' mighty name, have your way, great God that you are today. And thank you for today, us getting a more deeper, intimate time with you so therefore we know more of you. And thank you for your divine instruction. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for your time today. Invested wherever it is that I find you. Thank you for your time today. Um, I just thank you, Father, for being a bridge. For being a bridge, Father, for us to be in your presence, that we are a bridge where we need to get. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. The author writes, Daughters of God. Let me begin. When I watch my husband, Nick, interact with our daughters, I am often moved to tears by his tenderness, love, delight, generosity, protection, and provision. Mm, bring in Holy Spirit. Nick is not at all a detached father. He is not aloof, distant, rigid with our girls, rather because he loves them. He is involved in every aspect of their lives. The most wonderful aspect of Nick's love for the girls is that it's unconditional. He does not expect the girls to do anything to earn his affection or his love. He is head over heels in love with them for who they are. His devotion to them bursts from his loving heart and that is exactly how God the Father loves us. It's such a blessing for me to see in my husband's love for our daughters a reflection of God's love for us. His beloved daughters. He has your name engraved on his hand and he wants to be a part of every aspect of your life. Not just where we invite him. He wants to be a part of every aspect of our lives. In light of the great love, know that you can enter boldly into God's throne room of grace, full of joy and expectation. Bring it Holy Spirit. No matter what your earthly father was like, you can dare to open up to receive the head over heels love of your heavenly father today and every day in Jesus name. Um, thank you for that word. Um, engraved. I had looked up the, the definition of engraved. I believe I wrote it here, but let me look it up. And one more thing I want to remind you of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. They are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are vital to us being what God called us to be, to living a life of peace and prosperity. Um, we have to have these, but not only have them, we need to experience them because without experiencing them or seeing them or knowing them, we will not be able to create them for others or ourselves, if that makes sense. I'm learning now that you, you have to see and know something before you can become it or accept it. If that makes sense. If you're thinking, oh, I'm going to be a billionaire or I'm going to be the most loving person on earth. You're going to have to experience it and you're going to have to in order for you to be it. Bring in Holy Spirit. So engraved means to cut or carve text or design on the surface of a hard object. Um, many of you know when you go to the sand, you know, you write your name and it's not doesn't take much pressure to, to carve or engrave in sand, correct? But if you're doing it in concrete or you're doing it um, in wood, it's going to take a little bit more pressure. 
There's things right now that the Lord is calling you to engrave. The way we are engraved in his heart, his spirit, and his hand, he knows our uniqueness. He knows what we are, who we are, what we're going to be. He knows if we're going to obey him or disobey him, um, whatever it is that we have assignments in. I'm learning now that our family you know, members are assignments. We didn't choose our family members. We choose our friends. But our assignments are our spouse, our children, our grandchildren. I'm telling you that right now in my season, um, there's people that I'm called to. There's a community that I'm called to. There's um, families and, and strangers that I'm called to. Um, and, and God knew that already. When he created me, and created you, there's people, places, animals that you're called to. Let me give you a perfect example. Um, what I'm learning now is that as I'm prioritizing my time, things pop up to distract me or to inconvenience me. But what I'm learning now is that a lot of these things are testing the fruits of the Holy Spirit. What do you mean is me? I'm saying that God is involved in every area of my life and your life. He's involved in every area of our lives. As we grow, our love grows. Our love grows towards and for him or it grows away from him. Cause, you know, the environment that you create around you is going to either point you towards him. Your love is going to grow towards him. You're going to grow fonder, more interested of him. Or you're going to grow away from him. It's as a parent, you know, raises their, ch their children or your grandchildren that are in your life. You know, we have a cut, design, carved thing in us that the Holy Spirit puts in us. So we can be that that design for our children or our grandchildren. And what God is saying here is that I have engraved you in the palms of my hands. So I won't forget you. Engraving is a personalization and auto an, an authentic authenticity. It, you're rare. So that means that your your handprint is rare. Your thumbprint is rather rare. There is no other like you. Um and also uh, yesterday, let me give you a perfect example. Yesterday I was cooking and because, you know, I'm prioritizing my time, waking up early, getting my word in, praying, all of that good stuff. And then I was cooking yesterday and across um, the street, many of y'all know that my uh, one of my neighbors had a heart attack. And by the grace of God, I was there at the right time. I, I helped him. So he's hot in the hospital. But there was a bunny, a white bunny in his yard. Literally, I went over there to try to try to save him because I was like I know there's a cat out here that's always eating the birds and just out here you know praying and living that wild life that a cat does but she's a stray or whatever she is but I went over there I was trying to catch the I was trying to catch the the rabbit and I was like man I'm on a time limit but I know if I leave this rabbit here it's gonna get hurt so what I'm saying is that there's gonna be animals people that you're called to protect and and as if God is telling us I have engraved you in the palms of my hands. There's people that are engraved in our hearts. There's people that are engraved in our in our minds. There's people that are engraved um, in the physical body of us in the sense where we have a calling in our minds to go help those people, to not forget them in prayer, to not forget that they are in need. There's animals in the street that need help. Yes, animals are created by God as well. We have to protect, take care of them, um, get them to the you know, to the right authority that can help them because we're not vets. Um, but what I'm learning is that when we love as like God loves us to love others and you have your assignments where you have your family that you're assigned to, but you also have careers, you have a purpose, you have a community of people that you're called to, to be witnesses and testimonies to the glorious works of God. So you can, so they, you can educate them, inspire them, activate in them that there's a greater life than what they're living with the Holy Spirit. You're called to be not their saviors, but you're there to, to help encourage them and, and let them know that there's a greater hope. There's a greater gospel. There's a greater righteous way that the, that the Lord called us to be, to live, to experience his hope, his forgiveness, his saving grace, if that makes sense. So um, what I have recognized as well is that in loving and protecting and being there for my grandchildren, there's like a great healing in their presence. I don't know how, what, who or where, but there's just something that when I'm with them, I have this joy, nothing else sometimes matters. Um, it's just a beautiful thing. And what I'm learning is that as God grows, God's love for us grows, we multiply. And when we are multiplied, of course, we're going to be called in many more areas. But that's where God gives us, you know, to, to have order in our lives. Instruction, there's divine instruction in Proverbs. Um, another thing is, I think the quote that I had um, 
or that is love is not about how much you say I love you, but how much you prove that it is in fact true for those around you, for those who you love. So let's not just say these things, let's prove them. And it's like, um, it's not just about how we love God. A lot of people say, oh, I love God. It, our behavior and our actions will prove how much we love him, how much we trust him. Look back on things that you have done. If he's saying that I have engraved you in the palms of my hands, he's saying that he knows us. He knows us. He knows what we're going to do. He knows what um, what uniqueness we have to offer the world and what uniqueness we have to offer to his kingdom because he created us in such a way. Today's um, prayer is, God, you are our loving father. You are my loving father. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving you. Thank you for loving us unconditionally for caring about every aspect of our lives, every aspect of your life, every aspect of um, our loved one's lives. Whoever is in your life, they, God placed them there. Every human being has come from God, from our creator. He put you in your mother's womb. He engraved you on the palms of his hands. So he knows what you're going through. He knows what you're walking through. Have you surrendered things, your life to him? So therefore he can act on behalf of you. So therefore you can see things the way he's called you to see things. So therefore he can give you that, that glory, that power, that protection, that everything that you need. His presence is a present. It's a gift. It's freely given. You don't have to earn it. So I pray that he is involved in every aspect of your life. I myself have get caught up sometimes where I'm praying for things or I'm worried about things. And I'm just like, did I invite God in? And I pray every day and I'm trying to remember myself, like to be, to remember to say that every day that there, God is a miraculous God. I go down the alphabet that he's an admiral God. He's a miraculous God. He's an exceptional God. And whatever he is. When he's involved in every area of your life, he's going to give you that exceptional that you need, that exceptional power, that confidence, that affection, that grace. He is the super, he, he does miracles in the supernatural. He can surpass things. There's things that I've been praying for. And today I was reminded that I have to continue praying those bold prayers. I have to keep expecting those bold, miraculous, supernatural things that he can deliver. I don't need to go about living. I mean, I have to live the way he's called me to, but I don't have to go about believing that what man can do is what he's going to do. No, he's miraculous. He's supernatural. Keep praying those bold prayers. Keep praying miraculous things. I pray in the name of Jesus that God gives you signs and mirac miraculous signs and wonders to know that he has engraved you in the palms of his hands. He is going to provide for you things that you don't even ask for. I'm telling you, there has been things in my life that I'm not even asking for and they come through obstacles and opportunities. But I always know that wherever it is that I'm sent, derailed or detoured is because there's something that I need to learn from that. There's something that needs my power, my attention, my love, my grace, my unique uniqueness of grace and, and the fruits of the Holy Spirit that come through my uniqueness that the power gives me to give others. So that's why now I'm like, okay, I'm gonna be patient. I'm gonna take delight. I'm gonna take delight um, in all of these things. So God is a father that loves us unconditionally. And I will tell you that's coming from someone that really didn't have a father figure that loved her unconditionally. That's me. So I learned that it's okay if God didn't give me, you know, that father that I felt that I needed because he would put relationships in my life. In my life. I had to be open-minded to receive where he was going to send things to me, not what I felt. Because we have this idea of where God's going to deliver. And that would, that is what hinders us and blocks us from his miraculous signs and wonders and his works. Because we feel that he has to bring it to pass this certain kind of way. So if I find you today that you're in grief, you're in mourning, you're in, you've lost someone dear that you love... Um, this is a quote that I absolutely love, which says, grief is just love with no place to go. And William P. Spence wrote that. Beautiful, beautiful. Grief is just a love with no place to go. You have this love, this missing of someone, and it has nowhere to go. Pour it into the Holy Spirit. Pour it into people that he's called you to pour it into, and you will see that there will be a therapeutic healing in your mind, in your body, in your soul. It won't replace the person that has gone on to be with the Lord. But if you miss them, that means that they played a significant part of your life. And because of that, you will be, you pour that love that they gave you into other people. And that is how you keep their legacy alive is what I'm learning. Um, now that I'm a grandmother, I'm learning that the only way I could be a grandmother to my grandchildren is by loving the way my grandmother showed me, but also taking the Lord's divine instruction and the fruits of his Holy Spirit, which give me self-control and where to prioritize, where he's called me to prioritize. And I'm telling you right now, 
the things that God has called me to prioritize, they don't make sense to me. They don't make sense to my grandchildren. They don't make sense to my children. They don't make sense to a lot of people around me. However, that does not change the fact or the truth of what God has called me to prioritize. So maybe there's something that God has been calling you to birth. Just as when we're going to birth a baby, you know, you have that huffing and puffing. You have that body tired. That body is aching. It's tired. It's ready to just bring forth that baby. All that huffing, that struggling, that suffering. You have to master the art of suffering and you will go far in this life. You will go far and know that the fruits of the Holy Spirit are there for you to decide to use those in any circumstance of your life. And that is the power that the Lord has given us. There is so much power in being vulnerable and being honest with people. I'm recognizing now that there's some people in your life that they're for the moment. They're for their benefit. They're in your life. But God will still use them. You just have to be able to... Um, discern who's in your life for the long haul who's in your life for things that they need and who's in your life for those that you're going to love so i pray that the lord gives you great revelation insight clarity spiritual discernment wisdom beyond your years of age um, a peace that surpasses all understanding and the only way you can it fully fully have these feelings or have these experiences or this wisdom divine wisdom is by being in his presence these these the fruits of his holy spirit cannot live anywhere that his spirit doesn't live why because they are his fruits if you recognize that there's some people in your life that you will be around you feel like empowered you feel like they activate something inside of you that you're like man i like being around them they make me like feel that i can take on the world they make me feel encouraged they make me feel educated those people are in your life to help birth it's like when you give birth to a baby you have doctors around you that are helping you telling you how to push when to push when not to push that is how you have people in your life they're going to they're going to just their, the power of their presence is going to birth something inside of you. Or maybe there's something in there that has been wanting to be birthed and it's in seed form because everything comes in seed form. God is not going to give you a full blown tree. He's going to give you a seed. It's up to you to plant it. So sow it, water it, put it in enough sunlight. To me, the sunlight is the Holy Spirit because he gives us that energy of power, excitement. He gives us joy, peace. He gives us prosperity. And I, I'm learning that prosperity through his will is only connected to him. Many of us are out in the world trying to make things happen in our own way. We're thinking that if we get educated and we get um, encouraged and all of these things and we don't know his word or we don't read his word, you're not going to have nothing ignited in you. You'll get as far as you can get. But I'm going to tell you that when you get there, it's not going to multiply. Because he's saying, I will multiply you. I have plans for a prosperous future for you. Not to harm you, but to give you hope. We don't just want hope. You can go and you can go to church. You can go to all these things. But if the Holy Spirit is not there, there is not going to be no power activated in you. It's like when you go home and you turn on your light and the, the power is not on. You flip the switch. There's no power. There's no light. It's the same way with him. Consider him CPS in your life. Just how CPS gives us power when we don't pay the bill or something happens outside where there's one of those things that pops. You know, you can go to your house and turn on the light. It's not going to turn on. There's not that, 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 I don't know. Like to me, I feel like in the makeup world, I, I'm in the beauty industry. Or I was in the beauty industry. When I would put makeup on somebody, it would oxidize. And once it would oxidize, it would sit in their skin a certain way. There'd be a temperature. And just when it hits that air and the body, you know, there's a warmth, there's an oxidation of the makeup. And you can see how it's going to like be on someone's skin. Everybody's different. When that oxidation, oxidation took place, that's how I feel it is with the Holy Spirit. Any combustion, any oxidation, that is how the Holy Spirit works. You can got, you can have education, you can have strategies ideas plans but without the holy spirit there's not gonna be no combustion there's not gonna be no oxidation it's just gonna be plain old it's like me when i come live i study you know i read but there's just something that turns on when i go live and i'm like lord have your way have your way i wake up in the morning i'm like lord have your way i'm scared sometimes because the enemy may try to plant things in my head from the past but i know that god is going to work everything out so i'm not if i read the word and i'm encouraged and i sometimes get fearful you know i i'm like no you're a liar you're a liar go back to the pits of hell where you belong in jesus name so thank you for your time invested today um another quote that i have is the best or most beautiful things cannot be seen or touched they must be felt with the heart and that is by helen keller and I believe um, who God has sent and blessed that they engraved in your heart, knowing that they're God sent. I will tell you, I'm learning 
that there's people i don't know I, i've been seeing in even atheists or people that don't believe in god i am seeing now that god lives in everyone there is things that people do and i'm just like that's 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 god he will use enemies to be activated into something in your life enemies he will use enemies if he's telling you to use the fruits of the holy spirit with everyone that you meet you've got to be in tune with his holy spirit in agreement in partnership with his presence so therefore you can do the things he's asked you to do and he will make your enemies be at peace with you he will make your enemies do things that will work out for your favor and your benefit he will use your enemies to market you and advance you what who can do that i don't know but i'm learning that when god tells me to do something i may not understand but I am engraved in the palms of his, I'm engraved in palms of his hands. And his hands will be my hands. What he's asked me to do with my hands, he's done with his hands. So he's going to activate your hands. So thank you for your time invested. I pray that you've been advanced. And remember about how much you say, I love you. It's not just about saying, it's about proving it. Do, do your actions line up what God has called you to do, say, speak, to be, to not be. Do your actions say, I love you to your spouse, to your children, to God, to your relationship with God. I pray that that blesses you that question and to know that if he's engraved you in the palms of his hand, have you engraved him in the palms of your hand? Have you engraved him in your heart? Have you allowed space for him to dwell in? So if you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart and make you my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for your works in my life. Thank you for engraving us in the palms of your hands, Lord, and in the palms of your heart, Thank you, Father, for us being the dwelling of your heart. May we make our hearts your home. In Jesus' name we pray. If I uh, remember you're a king or queen, reign responsibly. If this activated in you or blessed you some way, shape, or form, whoever it is that God laid in your heart, please share with when those who refresh, others will too be refreshed. So God bless you. Thank you for your time today. I pray that it's advanced your spirit, your mind, and even your body. Remember, your body is a temple. You are exceptionally able, pre-qualified, protected, deserving, pre-approved, and equipped to be everything that the Lord has created you to be, see, create, serve, and fulfill in Jesus' mighty name. Go out into the world and be that for others. God bless you. Thank you for your time. I said I will see you all tomorrow. Bye.